All right, good morning. Today is uh, Tuesday, July 17th, 2018. My name is Nick Webb. I'm in for Dan Russo, who is on vacation. And this is Chaken Power Feed TV. Welcome to your daily market digest. Um, this is a uh, 15 minute segment to get you ready for the market and everything that's gonna happen today. Uh, it should be an interesting day today. There's a lot going on. Let's go get to it. So, what's happening? The big news is that Netflix reported after hours on Monday, and while its earnings hit, uh, its revenue missed badly, and it also guided much lower. So, in the future, uh, Netflix, as you know, is sort of built on the, the the valuation is so high that it has to be perfect. And in this case, it was definitely not perfect. And so there will be an incredible blowback that we'll see later on in this presentation. In other news, oil prices went sharply lower. This was due to a couple things. First of all, Steve Mnuchin in Treasury basically came out and said some Iranian oil will be allowed to uh, be exported and we won't punish people. You know, this is the sanctions that are being put on Iran, which obviously means that there is now an increased amount of oil that's going to flow into the market. Um, in addition, Russia came out and said that they would also continue to, to increase their exports. And so between the two, there was about a million and a half additional barrels of oil coming into the market, uh, which is enough to really bring the prices down. As you know, prices had been rising sharply because of both the sanctions and some of the other factors that were OPEC's uh, cracking down on, on their limits. So, so the fact that all of a sudden you've got this additional flow into the market meant that the oil prices went down and you'll see the impact of that later on. It was again, another flat day, not really a lot of activity. S&P still did not break the 2800 resistance. Uh, so I've got some charts that look at that. We'll, we'll talk about that. Retail sales report was strong. So not only was the current month beating its estimate, everybody was expecting a 0.4% increase in retail sales, came in at 0.5%, obviously not a huge difference, but then they also recalibrated May and brought that from a 0.8% growth to 1.3% growth. So they revised that up. The combination of those two things tells you that retail sales is very, very strong. If you look underneath the covers, there's winners and losers. Obviously, gas stations with the increases in oil prices have been going up dramatically, whereas uh, retail sales at clothing stores have been going down. That's kind of the Amazon effect. Um, mail order retail sales has grown by 1% this month. So again, you can see the Amazon effect still strong, but it looks like there's enough good retail sales in the pipeline that it's not a complete Amazon story. There's many other people benefiting from that. It was a good day for banks. After a tepid day yesterday, today was a good day, solid gains after there were several reports, Bank of America uh, and some others that really sort of propelled banks to, to larger gains. And that had a contagion effect across the market in the, the large banks. So what does the S&P look like? Still batting up against that, that resistance level of 2,800. Can't get over it. It's been hitting up against that for, for really a month now, a month and a half, and just can't crack it. So uh, I think unfortunately with the futures pointing to a lower open today, it's gonna have a harder target to hit. Um, so we're going to have to wait a while before we, uh, we move higher than 2,800. Uh, money flow continues to decrease a little bit. So again, I, I pointed that out yesterday, but again, that's something that we're going to want to see because if ins institutions start pulling money from the market, that's not going to help things in any way, shape, or form. So how did the major indices do? Uh, Dow slightly up, S&P slightly down. Uh, really no big major moves. Uh, one thing to keep an eye on, this was the second day in a row that small caps underperformed the large caps. The small caps were down 
uh, almost 0.4%. So, you know, that wasn't a great performance for them. But again, it's not a huge move. You can see the big winner was financials. It took a, you know, it, it grew almost 2% by the time the uh, end of the day was. And again, these are the large financial uh, uh, companies. So overall, you know, sort of non-eventful day in the market with the exception of the financials uh, and the energy stocks, which actually worked in the opposite direction. We'll, we'll talk about that later as well. So always my fun, uh, my, you know, the, the best slide that I can talk to is the stock of the day. This is a stock that is algorithmically chosen by Chaikin Analytics. Uh, and in this case, Ashford Hospitality in the real estate section. Um, you can see it had a good day yesterday. Very strong financials, strong earnings, strong technical, strong experts. Really looks strong everywhere. Um, and this is one that uh, it's a hospitality trust firm. So it looks like it's got a very strong trajectory out uh, into the six months. So where have the sectors been moving? Our, just as a uh, word, our slide has gotten kind of screwed up. We're, we're going to work on that in the uh, near term. But right now, we're sort of dropping off one sector because we added communication services into the, uh, the mix. But what's interesting is utilities, which had been dramatically underperforming, or well, not underperforming, but, but had been the weakest performer, all of a sudden became the top performer over the last five days. And that's because their input costs yesterday, because of oil prices, actually went down significantly. So because of that, they're up in the uh, top, top echelon after yesterday's market movements. Um, so materials, which is, you know, showed the opposite direction. So let's take a look at a particular industry. And again, this is chosen by uh, Chicken Analytics algorithmically. In this case, we're going to go through the software and services, which has been a major winner over the last six months, outperforming the S&P 500 by 16%, 17, almost 17%. Uh, it looks like it's got some, some room to go. It's, it's rated as our number one subsector. Uh, you know, sectors are the, the top level 10 sectors of the S&P 500, and then below those are the subsectors. These are the smaller slices. And of those 21 subsectors, the software and services is the number one performing uh, subsector. And that's not only because of the price performance, but also because of the power bar. The power bar looks at how many stocks in this subsector are rated bullish by Chicken Analytics and how many are bearish. There's really only four that are rated bearish right now, whereas there's 49 that are related, rated bullish. Um, so obviously a very strong sector. It's highlighted by the stocks down here at the bottom, Verant Systems, uh, which has had a nice run. Uh, I, I actually had owned some of Verant in my uh, IRA. Uh, Travelport and Sykes Center, enterprises. So uh, again, solid stocks look like they're very well positioned. A lot of great, very bullish stocks in this sector. Uh, one that you should definitely explore to find some, uh, some, some really good names. The only question you might have is, has it run too far too fast? And maybe you need to wait for it to retrench a little bit. But these are solid names, well run, a lot of good things there. So let's talk about the earnings updates. Uh, we already have talked a little bit about Netflix. Like I said, it beat on the earnings. So you would think, oh, great, everything's fine. But everything else about the Netflix earnings report was horrible. Revenues were down. New subscribers were almost at half the level of what was expected. Uh, and when the CEO and got, got up and talked and talked to the analysts, basically guided their earnings estimates and their revenue estimates lower in the future. Like I said, Net Netflix is built on forward estimates because you can't justify the financial ratios that Netflix has right now. Price earnings is ridiculously high. Price to sales, price to book, all these things are based on the fact that Netflix is going to grow its business exponentially over the next 
you know, few years. And if they don't, and if all of a sudden that looks to be not in the cards, there is a major price retrenchment because all of a sudden all those estimates have got to be recalibrated and that forward pot of money that was out there is no longer out there. So this stock becomes a lot less valuable. And what's interesting about Netflix is they're part of the FANG stocks, uh, Facebook, Amazon, Alphabet, Netflix, and Google. And that probably is going to have a contagion effect on all of these because all of these have built, been built on very high price to earnings multiples. All of them are basically expected to grow very fast into the future. And it'll cause people to have a second look at that. I think it'll also have a people have a second look at technology stocks in general. Outside of Netflix, which reported after market, the financial stocks, BlackRock and Bank of America, reported before market, which and both of them had really nice uh, estimates. The uh, Bank of America actually beat estimates by five cents, so I'm not sure why it says met estimate, but but they absolutely had a beat, um, and so they helped propel the financial major financial stocks forward yesterday. Um, Today, it's already been a busy market. Uh, I heard that Goldman Sachs had a good earnings report. Uh, United Healthcare had a very good earnings report. J&J also had a good earnings report. But I heard that uh, J&J actually is down pre-market. So not sure why that is. I haven't had time to go and delve into what's going on with J&J. But the rest all look like they're going to have a good day today. So let's talk about what's trending and what the losers were. And all of them pretty straightforward. Arconic, which is one of those when Alco was broken into two parts, Arconic was one of those parts. There's M&A rumors about them being a takeover target and that propelled the stock forward. The other ones are all, uh, you know, Bank of America, JP Morgan, Citibank, all those are related to the earnings reports. What's interesting, JP Morgan had a very good earnings report, didn't get rewarded for it um, yesterday, but today it definitely got rewarded for it as it moved forward strongly 4%. So all of a sudden it's looking like the major banks are gonna have a good, good quarter after all. It was a little in doubt after the first day of earnings reports. Now on the loser side, Outside of ADS, which basically they, they're a credit card, advanced data services, they're a uh, credit card company and they showed information about their portfolio yesterday. Concern there is the portfolio looks like it's beginning to take on more credit delinquencies. Uh, the credit quality is beginning to deteriorate and the market immediately reacted to that. Um, the rest of these, Marathon Oil has um, new field exploration and noble energy, all of those basically that's related to the energy, uh, to the oil prices. So you saw earlier in the, the session, oil prices really took a major tumble yesterday. And you can see it has, you know, when we talk about oil prices, a lot of people ask, well, you know, why are you talking about oil prices? This is about the stock market. You can see it has a direct effect on the shares not only of the oil companies here, and obviously absolutely direct, but a number of industries. For example, airline industries absolutely move in the opposite direction. So if um, oil prices go down, you'll see airline stocks go up. In this case, the ones that were most directly affected, the exploration companies, Marathon Oil, Hess, uh, Newfield Exploration, and Noble Energy, all those are in the, the uh, energy field. And a lot of them are doing the fracking, which is more expensive than extracting it from deep in the ground. All of those are, took a hit yesterday because of that. So um, with that, let's get to the final slide here because we're coming up on our 15 minutes. Just again, pitch, go to chickenanalytics.com forward slash power feed TV and sign up for getting this report delivered in your inbox every day. This is Nick Webb. Thanks for listening. Catch you uh, tomorrow, and Dan is back on Friday.